Hi guys, welcome to Techie DIY. In this episode, we're going to continue looking at the SaneSmart 3018 Prova, install the software on a Windows 10 PC, set up the machine and calibrate it. The first thing we're going to do is unplug the standalone controller and then plug in the USB cable. The software and driver are supplied on a micro SD card along with a USB adapter so that it can be plugged into a PC. First, we're going to install the CH340 COM port driver. Once that's installed, we can plug the USB cable into the PC. We can check that the COM port is working correctly by running Device Manager, expanding Ports COM and LPT, and then selecting the CH340 COM port. The device has been installed as COM4, and the device status shows that it's working correctly. Next, we need some software to send G code to the machine. SaneSmart have included a copy of Candle on the micro SD card. Candle is open source software and I'm just copying it into a directory on my C drive. To run Candle, open the folder and double click on the gerbil control candle.exe file. Next we need to tell Candle which COM port to use. Select the service menu, settings, and then under connection, select the COM port. When it's first powered up, gerbil is locked and the status indicates an alarm. This is to remind us to run a homing cycle before we use the machine. To unlock Gerbil, we can either type $x into the console or select the unlock button. Now we can use the jog keys to move the axes. Set the number of steps for each press of the jog key and change the feed rate which sets the speed that the axes will move. Selecting keyboard control allows us to jog with the keypad. Gerbil has several configuration settings which can be viewed by entering $$$ into the console. Descriptions of the settings can be found on GitHub. It's a good idea to take a copy of the settings before making any modifications. I just cut and paste them into Notepad. If one of the axes is moving in the wrong direction, then the $3 direction port invert mask setting should be modified. The table shows the setting values and the effect on the axes. The correct value for this machine is 2. And to change the setting, just type $3 equals 2 into the console. The $21 hard limit setting enables or disables the limit switches. This prevents the machine axes from traveling too far and breaking something. When a switch triggers, Gerbil halts all motion, turns off the spindle, and enters into alarm mode. Before you can do anything else, Gerbil has to be reset and the alarm unlocked. In practice, the switch will trip again, and we will need to reset and unlock a second time. The $130, $131 and 132 max travel settings are the maximum end-to-end -end travel distance for each axis. The value for X is 260, the value for Y 158 and Z 34. Homing uses the limit switches to accurately locate a known starting position. It's enabled with the $22 homing cycle setting. The homing directions are controlled by the $23 homing dire invert mask setting. The machine was supplied with this set to 3, so it homes to the bottom left with the spindle up. If we change the setting to 0, then the home position will be the top right with the spindle up. The $20 setting enables soft limits. 
This is a safety feature which prevents the machine axes moving beyond their safe working area. Soft limits rely on accurate maximum travel settings and homing. When soft limits are enabled, Gerbil checks to see if you're trying to do something that would exceed the working space, and if so, issue a feed hold. The advantage of soft limits over hard limits is that they are preventative and the machine position is retained. The Prover is supplied with a touch plate for automatically zeroing the Z-axis height. This can be activated from the Z-Probe button in Candle. The configuration for the button can be found under Service, Settings and Probe Commands. It contains a set of default G-code which finds the surface of the probe target without changing the work coordinates. This is useful for milling aluminium or printed circuit boards. SaneSmart have provided a replacement script that will work with a touch plate, but first we need to measure its depth and then edit the script to correct the depth value. Then we can paste the new script in. And now it will zero the z-axis to the base of the touch plate. If you want to keep the original script, then it can be pasted into one of the user-defined buttons. To obtain the best accuracy from the machine, the steps per millimetre setting should be configured for each axis. The initial values are 800, which means that the stepper motor takes 800 steps to move the axis by one millimetre. To calibrate the machine, move or jog the axis a defined distance, in this example 100 millimetres. Then measure the actual physical distance moved, 105 millimetres. And finally calculate a new steps per millimetre setting by dividing the jog distance by the measured distance and multiplying that with the existing steps per millimetre setting. Let's have a go at calibrating the X axis. First I put down some tape and then jog the V bit to mark the start position. Raise the bit to clear the surface. Jog the V-bit 200mm to the right. Put down some more tape and mark the end position. I measured the distance moved which was 202 millimetres. The new steps per millimetre value was calculated and then the $100 X axis steps per millimetre setting was updated with a new value. Now we can try that again from the same start position. And this time we get 200 millimetres. To calibrate the Y axis, we follow the same process, this time jogging 150 millimetres. The measured distance is 151 millimetres. We calculate the new steps per millimetre value in the same way as before and update the $101 Y-axis steps per millimetre setting with a new value. Measuring the Z-axis with a ruler is more difficult and it's easier to use calipers or an indicator. Calipers can be turned into a temporary height gauge by slotting them into a wooden base. I jog the Z-axis 20 millimetres. and the calipers measured 20.14 millimetres. The new steps per millimetre value was calculated and the $102 Z axis steps per millimetre setting was updated with the new value. Next we can check if the X and Y axes are at right angles to each other. Jog the axis in a 100 millimetre square and mark each corner. This time I turned on the spindle before lowering the bit. Thank you. 
If the axes are at 90 degrees to each other, then the diagonal measurements will be the same. If they're not the same, then one of the gantry sides can be adjusted until they are. A spoil board helps prevent damage to the table bed by allowing you to cut all the way through the workpiece material. It should be surfaced to obtain a consistent depth of cut across the work area and then resurfaced whenever damage builds up. These are the dimensions for the spoil board and the location of the mounting holes. The spoil board is mounted with countersunk screws and T-nuts with the screw heads sunk below the surface. A 22mm bottom clearing or surfacing bit is used to level the spoil board and a 6mm ER11 collet is used to hold the bit's 6mm shaft. I'm going to remove the motor because it's easier to film. The collet should just snap out of the holder but sometimes they need some help. The new 6mm collet snaps in and then the 22mm bit can be installed. Next we need some G-code to flatten the surface. I've created a project in easel. This cuts a rectangular area with a depth of 0.2mm. The rectangle is offset and larger than the spoil board so that the bit reaches the edges. The material size is set. The bit size is set to 22mm and the cut settings are 150mm per minute feed rate, 120mm per minute plunge rate and 0.2mm depth per pass. In theory this should take about 25 minutes. To export the G-code select the machine menu, then advanced, generate G-code and export G-code. The G-code is opened in candle. The machine is homed and the X and Y work coordinates zeroed. The bit is jogged towards the centre of the spoil board. Crock clip for the touch plate is attached and then the Z probe script is initiated. The crock clip is removed and then the G code is sent to the machine. You can see that the left hand side is lower than the right hand side and the bit is not cutting into it. So we will run it again and this time zeroing the Z axis on the left. This time it's leveled the whole board, so we're good to go. Okay, so that was an introduction to installing the software and configuring the settings. You can find links to all the things that were shown in the video description. Thanks for watching and see you again next time.